All right, the show today is for anybody who's written a book, a self-help nonfiction book, or anybody who wants to write a nonfiction book. I'm going to tell you exactly why only a tiny, small percentage of people ever hit the New York Times bestsellers list, and it's definitely not what you think. It has nothing to do with their following. I'll tell you all about it right after this. Hey, I'm Ken. I used to be a homicide detective. I was a cop for over 15 years and I got sick of it. When I found out I was gonna become a dad, I needed to make a change. In the last 15 years, I've started four different businesses in four different industries and they've made a lot of money. This channel is dedicated to showing people exactly how to build an eight-figure coaching business. Every single part of it. I love teaching people how to write books, how to get your books traditionally published, how to turn those books into seven-figure coaching businesses, and you're going to find all that information right here. Hey friends, this is a contentious topic because every year in America, over 500,000 non-fiction books are published. Think about that. 500,000 non-fiction books are published. But literally, like a tiny little fraction of those books ever hit a bestsellers list. In fact, there's an agency in the United States called Bowker, B-O-W-K-E-R. It's a research agency. It's a major company and they do research on the book business. If you ever want to check them out, go to Bowker.com. And um, Bowker released data every year about sales of books. And here's what their most recent data says about nonfiction books. Last year, there were over 500,000 nonfiction books published in the United States of America, and literally 90% of them never sold 100 copies. 450,000 books were published that never sold 100 copies. Think about that. I'm sure some of you guys that are watching this show um, are in that category. You wrote a book, you put your life into that book, you put probably hundreds of hours into it, blood, sweat, and tears into it. And I guarantee you the last thing you would ever think is, man, I hope I sell 50 books. You all had dreams of becoming New York Times best-selling authors and blessing the world with your knowledge. And to your right, you probably have amazing knowledge to share with people. And so it's a shame that your book never succeeded and got where you wanted it to go. So I wanted to spend some time with you today and tell you exactly what makes best-selling books different why some books you know excel and and sell hundreds of thousands of copies and why is it why is it that some books never sell 50 copies uh and it's not what you think in fact um over the last 15 years i've had myself and people on my team we've done a significant amount of research see we have a theory about the way books are written which i'm going to tell you about in a second and i believe and i will actually i'll prove it to you that if you write your book the right way, it will sell itself. It really will. Now, you got to do the work. you got to get the book out there. you got to promote the book. You've got to be very active on social media. I mean, these are all prerequisites that you have to do if you want to succeed. But if the book is not written the right way, it's going to fail anyway, in spite of all the effort you put into it. So the most important thing to do is to get the book written the right way up front. And that's what our research was about. So over the last 10 years, we have interviewed over 200 authors who wrote New York Times bestselling books. And we interviewed over 1,000 authors whose books failed. We interviewed over 1,000 authors whose books never sold 100 copies. And you know what we found? There was a radical difference between the way the books were written. See, people ask me all of the time, based on all your experience in the book business, and I've been doing this for 15 years, I've been on national and international television talk shows about book writing and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, and here's what I tell people. A book really will not become a top selling book unless it is written at such a high level that somebody who doesn't know you and reads the book will recommend the book to somebody who doesn't know you. I mean, let me ask you a question. Have you ever read a nonfiction book? It was so amazing. You couldn't put it down. It made a, a, like a, an incredible impact on your lives. What did you do? You told other people about it. On the consequence, or on the other hand, have you ever read a book that sucked that you couldn't finish writing? How many people did you tell about that? Right, none. So what we found when we interviewed those 200 New York Times bestselling authors, we asked them questions about how they wrote their books. 
And here's what 100% of them said. They said, I wanted to help somebody solve a problem. They said in my own journey, and collectively, of course, right? They said all said it different ways, but the fact of the matter is they all said that they were writing books to help people solve a problem, a problem that they had fixed themselves and they had done a bunch of research around this problem. They had interviewed other people around this problem and in, in their own solving of the problem, plus all of their ancillary research they did, they found that there was a specific path that if somebody took it, they would literally uh, fix the problem for themselves. That was interesting. That was fascinating to me. It was really interesting because years earlier, um, I wrote a book that failed. And when I look back at that book, it was called From Here to Having It All. When I look at that book that failed, I found that it wasn't written that way. I was telling the story of how I had made a bunch of money, how I'd gone from in debt over my head to making a bunch of money. And all I was doing really was writing a book that told my story. So when we started interviewing and doing research into the thousand authors that failed, guess what we found? Yep, you guessed it. They were writing a book like a like almost like an autobiography but not even a good autobiography they were just telling the the writing the book in the way it happened to them chronologically so chapter 1 was before they had their challenge chapter 2 was when they had their challenge chapter 3 was when they figured out what the solution was chapter 4 was a month later after they they solved the problem how life got better chapter 5 you, you get the point right that's a recipe for disaster friends think about this um, over a thousand nonfiction authors that we interviewed and talked to about this subject and every one of them with a failed book, it was written that exact way. On the other hand, over 200 New York Times bestselling authors that we interviewed and they're all books were written logically. Their books were written to help people. So instead, those authors, what they did is they, they figured out who would, who would be the perfect person to read this book. And then what's the problem they have? And then they said to themselves, if I had to teach somebody how to fix this problem the fastest way possible, how? what's the order that I would teach them this stuff in? What's the order that I would teach them this stuff in? So what's step one? What's step two? So it's logical. It's the way they want to teach the information. Now, when I looked at these books, when we looked at these books, we found that there was still lots of stories of the author's life. There was lots of relevant information, but it was all structured in a learning modality, the way somebody needed to learn. So my advice to you, plain and simple, number one, if you've already written a book and it didn't do well, if listening to this video, this show, made you realize that you wrote your book the wrong way, that you wrote it chronologically the way it happened to you, and you want to know how to fix it, I want you to do your book again. I don't want you to leave it. We'll give it a different title. We'll give it a different name, but do your book again. In fact, in the notes, there is a link to go watch a very special workshop where I go into detail about exactly how to structure your book and I even show you a system where you can write the first draft of your book in less than five hours and how to ensure. I show you my entire book selling machine protocol that will guarantee you sell thousands of books all in one workshop. Go to basicsimplesystem.com. Don't give up. The world needs your book. Do it again. And for those of you that you're thankfully you're seeing this video before you, you know, you want to write a book, but you're seeing this video before you've started writing, you go there too. watch that workshop, basic, simple system.com. I'll put the link in the notes. This is a workshop that I originally did for a group of my students who were in a book writing program that I, I do four times a year on zoom where they write their books with me over three days. And I did a 90 minute presentation, a deep dive on exactly how to structure your book. It takes like 20 minutes to structure your book properly. That means what are the chapters? What are the order of the chapters? How does it work? And then how to write your book in 10 minute bursts. So you never get writer's block because you're only writing 10 minutes at a time and you write your book faster. You can write it in as little as five hours of straight writing if you do it this way. And then the third thing in the workshop is I'm going to show you how to guarantee sell a thousand books in your first month and 10 to 20,000 in your first year using a system that I call the book selling machine. Check it out. Go watch that masterclass, basicsimplesystem.com. 
And I'll be back here in a couple days with some more amazing book information. We'll see you soon.